Who doesn't love fall amongst knitters? It is the best knitting season. And now that the temperatures are finally cooling down and we're all getting ready to go to fiber festivals, are you looking for some new patterns to knit? Because here are my five favorite fall knitting patterns from my own collection. Hello, my name is Asia, and you are watching the latest episode of the Thoughtfully Made Fiber Vlogcast. I am a knitting pattern designer and sometimes spinner weaver and sewist here living in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, these days, I don't have a lot of time for the non-knitting fiber arts, but I am trying to do more. And actually, you can see behind me here uh, something I sewed up for summer that I'm styling with a sweater for fall. So. If you're starting to think about layering your knits and adding more fall knits to your wardrobe, this is the video for you. Um, I don't really believe in there being like a last season or current season knit. All my knits are meant to be worn forever. So um, here are some of my favorites that I have ever designed. I am wearing the Friendship Pullover, which is my slightly cropped. It's like a high hip. So it I pull my standard t-shirt out it's actually a little longer but I actually like to wear it with high-waisted pants and my shirt tucked in so it just hits it just passes the waistband on a this is not a high waist this is like a mid-rise so my belly my waist is here my belly button is here and it just about covers my belly button so this is my festival sweater this year I designed it a little shorter so that you can wear it with all the high-waisted jeans and also I didn't want too much coverage because I know that a lot of the fall festivals are actually quite warm. So um, yeah, this is a bottom up cable panel pullover knit from La Bien Aimee's Cory Worsted, which is a hand dyed yarn that's so beautiful. You can see all the beautiful heathering throughout here. And also that nice compound raglan shaping on the shoulder. It is a bottom-up raglan construction and it works up pretty simply. I feel like there's only like a couple new things to do and it works up really fast because once you get to the yoke it's like it gets smaller and smaller and then you're like I'm almost done. So this is a great one to knit if you would like to wear it with all your friends at the festival which indeed is what I did. In August I attended the inaugural Flock Fiber Festival in Seattle and I got to meet Aimee of uh, Libyan Aimee, uh, the dyer genius behind this yarn. Um, it was super fun. I'll put a picture of me and Aimee up here, but um, it was my first time doing a fiber festival as a designer. Uh, I have not attended a fiber festival or been to like, or anything since before the great pandemic. Uh, and then I only started designing in 2021. So uh, it was really fun to meet so many of you and I even got to match with a few of my pattern testers and get to meet them and that was so fun and I really had such a good time getting to chat a little with all of you. I really wish I had more time to spend with each and every person I met at the festival but I'm really glad that I got to meet you all and take some pictures. I saw quite a few oolong tanks floating around and that was super fun. But anyway, back to the sweater. Um, Amy has her own version of it and I'm just so happy to say that it stood up to wear and I actually didn't wear it that much but I have been wearing it since. But um, I'm working up my second version of it now as this one will be traveling on a trunk show to New York. So um, this is a great one. I think if you wanna knit a cable, I think if you want to knit a cable sweater, but you're not ready to dive into like a complex all over cable, this one is a great one for you. Uh, it's just enough cable to give you that fall vibe. And then like you knit a little bit of cable and then you stock in it all the way around and it is knitted around. So it's quite quick. Um, the cable panel will make you feel like it goes by in no time. And it's really fun to watch this beautiful cable appear. Um, you don't have to knit this funnel neck if you don't want to. There is options for knitting like a plain crew neck or even like a long mock neck. But for mine, I folded it over so that it has that like stand up collar vibe and I'm really happy with how it turned out. 
As always, this one is inclusively sized and all my patterns are. Um, yeah, all of these are sized up to at least 60 bust. I know this one goes up to like 66 and it has bust starts for those who need a little more room in the front. So this is a great all around option for daily wear. I think the bust starts will really ensure that it doesn't ride up in the front and that you're comfortable all day. So as always, all of my patterns are available on Ravelry and Payhip and everything that's mentioned here today will be available in the description box. I will link them individually, but also link to my pattern shop so you can take a look around. And if you love these kinds of sweaters, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can see more. And also I have a newsletter, which I'll also link below. All my test knit calls are um, sent to my copy subscribers first and then to my newsletter subscribers. So if you'd like to test for me, please do check it out. Sub subscription link and everything below. Uh, let's move on to the second pattern I'm gonna feature today, which is the Building Blocks Cardi. So you can see in the sample that um, it has a v-neck and it has a little button band down the middle. I've shown that before here, so I'm not gonna take forever and go over it and over it, but it is worsted weight. It knits up very quickly and it has some gorgeous underarm shaping in the upper sizes to make sure that um, the end of the sleeve cap here um, lands on the same place on everybody. It comes with a short sleeve kind of slip over version, which I've styled here with a puff sleeve dress, which is definitely, this is like the sample I'm gonna steal from my own wardrobe. Um, maybe I should have a video titled patterns or um, samples I'm stealing from work. Uh, anyway, so this one is knit from Nutidin, but you can also knit it from Gilead, from Derurum Natura, or um, Brooklyn Tweed Shelter is a popular one for this one. I really like this piece. It's a great layering piece, and I think I'm going to actually get more wear out of the vest slipover version than I will out of the uh, full-length cardigan version because it's just so versatile over the fall season and I don't have to cram a whole worsted weight sleeve into a winter coat. So that's the thing about like hand knitting and worsted weight is that I found that so many of the winter coats that I'm able to find here don't fit my whole, whole arm in it um, and I don't have I feel like I have pretty average arms like it's being on the size of the size chart so I find that with a thick worsted weight sweater no matter how slim the sleeves are it's a struggle getting it to fit into a coat so um, for me layering pieces like this are very versatile and they'll go all the way into the winter um, this comes in a ton of sizes and of course bust starts for those who need a little more room in the front in fact you can see the front hem lifting up just a little, you can see that like that frown here, that frown line here. And that's because the dress form has more uh, bust tissue than I do. So she needs a little bit more bust starts, but I don't really. Um, I have one where I sized down in the shoulders and then I needed bust starts because this part didn't have enough ease to cover me. But I honestly think I could have gotten away without it. Like the difference is very minute on me. So uh, this is the one I'm going to steal from work <laughs> for my own wardrobe. I'm quite excited about it. That gray color, that natural gray color is so beautiful. So that is the Building Blocks Cardi. Um, it is highly customizable, so there's lots of options that you can choose from. Uh, so to help you with that, I in the pattern, I have included coloring book pages so that you can pick out the view that you want, whether it's like a split hem or plain hem, long sleeve or short sleeve. Um, I think we have like a stripe edging detail or no stripe edging detail, like all kinds of things. And then if you want to add your own color work and stripes, this is a great one for that. There are quite a few um, customers who've done that, who've done like incredible color work and striping and all kinds of things with it. So this is a great plain canvas. I'm also thinking that some embroidery might be really nice. I actually have some leftover of this yarn, so I'm thinking about doing like a little embroidery action, but we'll see. I feel like embroidery is difficult with this yarn because it is unspun, so I haven't tried it yet, but I think if I hold it with some mohair, it can be doable. But anyway, um, 
the building blocks party it's full of possibilities there's so many different views highly recommend hope you check it out so next we have Anne's puff sleeves which i launched in october last year and i think this is a great transitional piece for fall um, it is the perfect combination of like really easy to knit with a little itty bitty bit of new technique um, so it is knit plain except for this little um, lace raglan detail here uh, it's very subtle it just lends a little bit of texture and interest and then once you're done with the yoke you go back and kind of like baste up the pleats that are on the shoulders let me show you this beautiful pleat uh, it features a beautiful raglan shaping with a little bit of that lace detail and then it has this puff that's created by a pleat at the top of the sleeve and I just love this pattern so much. This has remained a favorite here and I'm seeing a few people purchase this pattern and start to knit it now for fall and I'm so excited to see what they come up with. Um, I have a video just about this one so I'll link that over here somewhere. I don't know where uh, the tags are actually yet but um yeah it's a gorgeous one it also has this lovely mock neck funnel neck i've had some people like fold it over for like a fold over crew like that but i actually really like it just the way it is um i think that the yarn is beautiful and i want to show off more of it and it stands up because it has good neck shaping it stands up a bit away from the neck it's not like choking you right here where this seam ends um yeah this is seamless it's top down it's way easier than you think and I give full instructions and even a diagram for how to sew the pleat and it's finished with a cute little gathered sleeve with I-cord detail here to give it that signature puff and I'll drop a little modeled photo here for you as well so that you can see what it looks like but if you're interested in something a little bit different that isn't quite like a classic sweater um, or like a classic modern knit and you want something that's a little more vintage inspired this one could be for you so moving on to an oldie but a goodie here is the transition slipover this was actually my first ever released garment pattern uh, this one i created as kind of an adaptive piece where um back when i was designing this I was still uh, nursing my baby and who is now a toddler or preschooler um, but I really wanted something that I can unbutton easily for access so kind of like a nursing maternity situation but also um, if you are pregnant and your body is changing you can unbutton the bottom ones for a little vent so that it doesn't stretch out over the belly um, but I also think that the side button band is just a really cute detail. Uh, I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's an oldie but a goodie. It's size inclusive and it also is reversible. It has this gorgeous, gorgeous cable panel. This one actually is all over cable and it is knit flat, but there's no seaming because of button bands. So it is knit flat all the way up and then you have this gorgeous deep v-neck on one side and on the other side you have a scoop neck so it is reversible it is super fun and yeah i highly recommend this one i like this one also layered over dresses and i think i'm going to be um because this is an old pattern i'm going to be stealing this for more pretty soon so this was knit up using wolf oak toe which is a really beautiful 100% uh, super fine merino yarn and it is very soft and very bouncy due to the merino having lots of crimp so it holds up to these cables and really pops beautifully you can see the way it catches the light here it's so lovely statement piece and being a vest it's very quick to knit up so i hope you'll give that one a try this is the transition slip over last but not least is the matthew pullover this pattern used to be called the seasons change pullover and now that it's back in my library i will be relaunching it next month as the matthew pullover it is a menswear inspired gansey style pullover and i wanted it to be i wanted to print 
and I wanted to bring it home to the Anne of Green Gables collection that I have because I feel like it fits within that like really rustic, um, homey, daily sweater that I love to wear and love to make. So it is knit bottom up uh, in a very large gauge, 14 stitches over four inches. So it knits up really fast. And then once you get past the armhole split, there's some texture, uh, cable and seat stitch all the way up to the shoulders and shoulder shaping. It's bound off with three needle. And then um, you can either knit it as a vest or you can knit it as a sweater, which I have done here. I will also be showing the vest version in a later vlog. That one is being sent to me by my sample knitter, Gillian. And yeah, it has this gorgeous texture front and back. So that it really has that like really, I don't know, it really does have that homey vibe, doesn't it? Like the texture is flowing from plain to textured. I really this sample is knit up in Newtoden, as are many of my samples because I love them so much. But the second sample will be knit up in something like uh, Derurum Natura Cyrano, the bulky weight version of Gilead. Another good one would be Brooklyn Tweed Quarry would be a good one to use for this. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I also finessed the neck a little bit to be a little bit more open. Um, I just think it'll be really cute with like a little collar popping out because I live in flannels in the fall. So um, that's just a personal preference. So yeah, lots of little fit tweaks for this relaunch that's coming in October, the first week. So I hope you enjoyed this little sneak peek at the Matthew pullover and the look at all of the fat fall, all of my favorite fall patterns that I've ever released. I hope you're having a wonderful week and that you see something that inspires you that you perhaps want to make. Once again, my name is Amy Schur and all my patterns that I've mentioned today and many others can be found in the description box below. Please do subscribe if you'd like to find out more about all my patterns and I sometimes have behind the scenes and fiber and spinning and all of these different things going on here. So I do hope you'll be back. I will talk to you very soon. Please do let me know in the comments what you're planning on knitting this fall, whether it be one of these patterns or really anything else. I'd love to know what you're knitting. So I'll talk to you soon. See you later.